My name is Chip, AKA Jet Sonorama. I'm here in downtown Phoenix, Arizona, where I've been invited by Kirk Strawn, who um, has um, an, an event space, maker space called Walter the Bus. Art is really at the core of, of what the Walter organization works on. And this building is on one of the busiest streets, one of the main corridors into downtown. And we have this, this opportunity to not only celebrate the history of this building, but also to celebrate Chip and the work that he does. His large scale wheat paste uh, photo murals are, are absolutely amazing. So I was invited to put a piece up on this east facing wall as it comes around to the north and then goes back to the east. And the piece that I'm going to put up is from the Navajo Nation where I've been working the past 33 years. It's a little hard to see what this piece is going to be, but um, on his hands is written believe. Since the pandemic and the period of social unrest, um, I think that those two elements probably drove our ultimate decision as to um, believe, which is the name of the piece that's going up. This piece is also a collaboration with Diné poet Esther Boleyn, and she did a poem called Believe. And it was actually that poem, I think, the, the combination of poems and the imagery is what drew Kirk to the piece. When I was invited to be part of this project with Chip, he did show um, some of the images that he was planning to use. And so right away that belief prompted the poem. She wrote a piece that anticipates, that imagines the world post-pandemic, you know, what, when things are back to, not necessarily back to normal, but, you know, we don't have to be as guarded um, in our interactions and in worrying about this virus. So it's an uplifting and positive piece. The message and the emotion that I take from, from this piece is one of hope and one of moving forward. The emotional impact of the pandemic, the emotional impact of injustice and isolation really penetrates each person. So it's more of a humanity concern and a plea for people to draw upon, you know, inner strength that they might not even have known they have. As a physician who's been in this community on the Navajo Nation for 33 years, it's been especially difficult. Um, it's, you know, the months of May and June were challenging in that that's when the Navajo Nation had the highest case, case positivity rate per 100,000 of any place in the world. We lost people. I mean, but sadly, we are still losing people. You know, co-workers have passed from the virus. Um, co-workers, parents, people I consider friends who are also patients have been lost. So it's been really rewarding uh, for me personally to get to go out and, you know, try to make beautiful art. I hope people take that word and start to apply it to this time that we're in. And it's a good time to believe in something. And I think that uh, there's such need for healing right now um, that it might take a little belief to uh, kind of get the ball rolling. Believe. Afterward, we will get up. All together. With the sound of canyon wind howling, red clay, masks preserving our faces, our government clothes tattered, no longer creased with false doctrine. The pressurized steamed language escapes from the pores in our skin. The monogrammed label, property of US government, erased from memory. Our teeth, sweat, saliva, fingernails, strands of hair, recompose as the daughter of 
first man and first woman. The four support pillars reconfigure the directional mountains. The zenith and nadir bolt lightning into our backbone. The stone knife in our hand slays monsters. The sun rays fasten us snugly to Nahustan. The rainbow tethers a shield over us. All together, the intertwined winds breathe again.